Charlie the Christmas Crane. All right, in this example, I'm gonna be showing an overturning moment for a crane. An immobile crane, so I have two different free body diagrams. This is just for the crane platform, and this is for the crane with the truck. This total of 23 inches. The crane platform is nine inches, and the total weight of the truck and the crane is six and a half pounds. So this shows the boom at 21 inches, and fully extended, it's at 28.7 or 29 inches. And this shows the length from the center of where it's attached to where the line goes down for the hook. Okay, so first, to show the overturning moment of just the crane, if the crane had just one point of weight right there and two forces, we would do a sum of the moments at point B equal to zero, which is equal to the negative force of six and a half pounds multiplied by the negative four and a half inches due to side conventions minus 17 and a half inches times the weight. So this equals 29.25 inch pounds minus 17.5 inches W. And then from there, you can just add this to the other side. So 17.5 inches W equivalent to this, 29.25 inch pounds. And you divide by the 17.5 inches, signs cancel out. This cancels out. So maximum weight before tipping, just for the crane platform if it was not attached to the mobile unit, would be 1.67 pounds. But since we have the crane attached to the truck. There's about 3.5, three and a half of the pounds where the crane and the platform is sitting, which is about right here, the nine inches. <clears throat> and so we have a force acting here and a force acting here at B. And the distributing the weight between the 23 inches of the truck and where the line drops down here, there's an extra three and a half inches. So, taking the moment of the truck at B, seeing as how when it tips, A will be going up and become a zero force. Take the sum of the moments at B equal to zero. So this is equivalent to the negative three and a half pounds times whatever the weight on the hook is, plus 11.5 inches, because it's positive, 
using the right hand rule. Multiplied by the six and a half pounds. Try to write six pounds. So, calculating this would be negative three point five pounds or inches. <laughs> times W plus 74.75 inch pounds. And then you would just take this over to the other side. Also, break it down further to find the forces of the entire system to show that the forces are equivalent. So, if we were to take a moment. at A and set it to the negative 3.5 pounds times the negative 4.5 inches due to sign conventions minus the 3 pounds or plus negative 3 pounds times negative 16 inches away from A, and that's saying that right here is where the first force of 3.5 is going to be, and over here is where the second force of 3 pounds is going to be. <laughs> and then you also would have a force C, Oh no, I lied. It's just B. So that equals 15.75 plus 48, and that equals 63.75. inch pounds and to find the force or this is finding the forces so to find the force of B you just subtract B from this side or add B to this side and then you could take the 63.75 
inch pounds and divide it by the full 23 inches that it is away from A. And you would come up with 2.77 pounds of force for SB and so then since there has to be an, an equilibrium, the sum of the forces in the X is zero with an unloaded crane. And so then the sum of the forces in the Y are equal to zero. And if you have negative 3.5 pounds, can you still see that? Mm -hmm. Minus three pounds plus 2.77 for FB, and then you're also going to have FA to figure out. So whenever you subtract all of this, or now it all together, you get a negative 3.73 plus FA. Add this to the other side so that it'll cancel out. And these are all pounds. So 3.73 equals FA. And when you add all of that together, it's equivalent to zero. So the crane unloaded would be in equilibrium. But to answer the question for the overturning moment, the maximum weight that you could have on the Chris, Charlie the Christmas Crane would be 21.4 pounds. And do a little demonstration down here. with Charlie. You can see when he's rotated and not fully supported, this box weighs a little bit over 1.6. And you hook it on and he goes to tip. He goes to tip. Now, when the mobile truck is, or the mobile crane is fully supported by the truck and the wheels and all that weight. And you can see Charlie's trying to help Santa Claus out. Driving reindeer. You can hook this weight on and it's completely stable. But, if you go and you put enough force on this part, which would be probably be about 20 pounds, I can't really measure my force, then the crane is going to begin to tip over. And that just demonstrates how the crane can tip over. Another part of this lab was to answer the questions of how reality was different than this estimate and what factors contribute to that. Um, stronger materials, obviously this is plastic and the hydraulics on this piece of machinery are not up to par as far as real life construction equipment. Real situations, there would also be more of a counterweight at a point, at point A to prevent tipping. Another factor would be um, usually on a mobile crane, there's going to be outriggers to help stabilize it um, to the ground. Another question um, to answer was solutions to make the crane tolerate heavier loads. Some of those solutions could be providing a counterweight heavier than the load. So if I was to set like more of a weight on the backside of Charlie, he could probably handle a bigger load. Um, put outriggers on the crane with necessary weights to stabilize it, um, give it a few more points of stability. You could also choose a crane with a boom arm that's made of a lighter material that doesn't compromise the strength. And, or you could also just get a crane with a bigger load tolerance in general. And uh, that's Lab 16 and Charlie the Christmas Crane going to be helping Santa deliver some presents.